Hey everyone, welcome to Kempner Sports. My name is Rev Trev and I'm so glad that you're here. Today I'm going to review all this this Bo Horvat trade and what it, it ended up being with Hronik and uh, with Detroit, with Vancouver, with uh, the Islanders. This has been a wild, absolutely wild uh, trade deadline for the Vancouver Canucks, which is actually good news because Jim Rutherford was touted as the guy who makes deals and there hadn't been a lot. And all of a sudden, this trade deadline became absolutely exciting. Um, now, some of you have seen my YouTube shorts. I, I create a lot of YouTube shorts and the one was my initial reaction to this Hronik trade. And I thought it was absolutely awful. And so I've had some time to think about it. I've gotten some pushback on that video, which I, I have no problem if people uh, disagree with me. We can agree to disagree. But as a fan, I'm allowed to react. I'm, a, I'm allowed to make content because I make content that is passionate, that is realistic, and that is honest. And that was my passionate, realistic, and honest take at the moment of that deal um hindsight 2020 was these uh, good trades for vancouver i mean Bo was absolutely loved in vancouver and that is where we it was difficult because and then there's all those jt miller rumors which i kept saying and you've seen it in my videos that i never thought that jt miller was ever going to get traded i thought it was clickbait uh, maybe he hit People had called for him. Alvin is denying that. But you can't trade JT Miller and Bo Horvat in the same year. You would have Pedersen and who at center. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So, the decision was to move Bo Horvat. Here's what the deal ended up being, okay? Bo goes to the New York Islanders. Detroit ends up getting the first conditional pick from the Islanders in the Veronic trade and a second round pick from Vancouver for this season. And then um, the Canucks get Beauvillier, who's been an absolute beauty so far, Ratu, Veronic, uh, and uh, Detroit's fourth pick in 2024. So, or 2023, I apologize. So, hindsight 2020. Looking at his trade, having some time to think about it, the good news is we did get a right-handed shot defenseman. Now, this is what I've been saying in this deal because we that's what people are complaining and I was complaining about in the Horvat deals. We never ended up getting a right-handed defenseman for Horvat, but when it all was said and done, um, we did end up getting that guy. What the pushback I have, and I've been watching some highlights more of Hironic to understand who he is as a player. I mean, 25 years old, young, that's good. Um, can He's got a laser for a shot. He's got a massive shot. Um, he's, he's having a career year in points. And my thing is that he is absolutely a good player. There's no doubt about it. He's a good player. My question is on this trade, on that trade, was... Is he going to be great? And that's the question we don't know. And this is the one where I thought that what we could get with that Islanders pick in the first round would be could be great. And that's where I did not like the trade. Now, I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong about that assessment. He might be great in Vancouver. And if he is, that's what we're all hoping. So we hope that this works, right? Um, but here's the thing. Brock didn't get moved. Garland didn't get moved. Like, basically everyone in Vancouver wanted everyone traded except for Pedersen and Hughes. Even some people were talking about Demko, and I was like, I made another video about that. That's absolutely garbage. Um, here's the thing. After w looking at all this, I actually think that how it all panned out, it turned out to be a good trade. I guess in Vancouver, and, and not every fan in Vancouver knows the league like some other fans like um you know I follow lots of sports so to be have a pulse on everyone is very difficult 
But I think what Vancouver fans are kind of tired of is that we don't get any name recognition coming back. It's like, we're so tired of trades happening and they go, who? And now we got to research them and go, oh, we got to find out. And and I remember I was talking with, uh, with a gentleman about this trade and how disappointed I was. And he said, um, well, Horanek's going to be a really good five or six defenseman on Vancouver. And I'm like, Five, if, if, if he's only going to be five or six, that is one of the worst trades we've ever made because Luke Shen was a five or six defenseman and when we got rid of him for a fourth round pick. I think Hronik is not a, a five or six player. He's They're bringing him in as a two, three, four defenseman. He's going to play a lot of minutes and it's going to be incredible. I hope that Ratu develops and becomes an incredible, Incredible player like they were hoping he would do. Beauvillier has been really great. Uh, I think it was in, it's in 11 games. He's got 11 points. So, I, I mean, what else could we want, right? So, hindsight 2020, I'm starting to like this trade a little bit more. I'm going to give Horonic the benefit of the doubt and watch and see. I'm not going to, like, my initial reaction was it's horrific. I could be wrong about that. I hope I'm wrong about that. I want the Canucks to succeed. What's crazy about this deal is Alvin, after everything said, says that they're really disappointed in this season, but they think that we are a playoff team for next season. And that is that is actually, I don't know if I agree with that statement, but I hope he's right. Um, this is the primary problem with Canucks fans because you're either in... Uh, a couple camps, okay? You're either in, we need to totally rebuild this team, or that we're listening to the the management and understanding that they're saying they're going to retool. They're not rebuilding. And, and we need to stop thinking in the rebuild mindset. If you believe in rebuild, that's totally fine. That's your right. That's your opinion. But the people who are in charge, that Heronic trade is a, is a retool a retool um, trade that is to get us into the playoffs for next season. Nobody likes to lose. Now that might not be the right strategy. At the end of the day, they make the calls, and so uh, I'm excited to watch Heronic. I I'm excited to see Beauvillier continue. I I just felt like that first and second round pick. I was so excited that we finally had draft capital. I was so excited that we finally had some cap room. Um, and, and it just went away so fast that it was really difficult to see. So I'm, I'm cheering for our Canucks. I'm, I'm pumped to watch them for the rest of the season. I'm still team tank because I want a top two pick, top three pick. Um, I don't think, um, well, I mean, with Demko back, we're going to start winning some games. So I, I think we're going to get between five and eight. Uh, in the in the standings, and I'm hoping we, we just win the lottery. I mean, if we bomb it for Bedard, and or we just win the draft lottery and get Bedard, this will be a super successful season. But uh, that's just too hard to predict. So, anyways, long video to just kind of talk about my tr this trade, uh, the way it shook down. I'm liking it more and more. Um, I'm also going to let do a wait and see approach. I'm going to, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Um, so I would love to hear what you have to say. Please hit that like and subscribe. I would love to have your support. And uh, I never claim to be an expert. I'm just a fan who loves to make uh, passionate, realistic, and honest Canuck content. Have an awesome day and go Canucks go.